Well, good morning. Welcome to Glad Tidings Clang Sunday Celebration Service. Thank you for making time uh, to join us for this service, to honour the Lord this morning or whenever that you're tuning in. Can I just encourage you to set aside the things that surround you, whether it's your breakfast meal or your devices, and uh, let's get ready to worship the Lord this morning. Even as I lead us into a time of prayer, can I just encourage you to uh, get ready your hearts and just invite the Holy Spirit uh, to minister unto you this morning. Lord, we thank you for this morning that we are found in your presence. We thank you for your hands of protection that have been upon us and upon our family the entire week, O oh God. We want to give you all the glory and all the honour because we know that you are good and you are faithful, God, in spite of everything that's happening around us, O oh God. So Lord, this morning we want to honour you, God, with our day of rest, with our time that we will come and worship you and to receive your word, O oh God. We pray that, Lord, you will receive all the glory and all the honour, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, let's get ready to worship the Lord. Uh, and can I just encourage you to, uh, whether you like to stand or you remain seated, to worship the Lord wholeheartedly. Good morning, church. Let's all come together and let's worship Him and let's give out everything we have. Amen. Yeah. 
fair Cause you never lost a battle No, you never lost a battle I know, I know You never will What a beautiful name it is What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus Christ my what a beautiful name it is Not encompass this What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus When I sing you word a word Word a word in the beginning What we got now
Once again, welcome to Glad Tidings Clang Sunday Celebration Service. If you're joining us for the very first time here on the screen, you will see the QR code where you can just scan and provide us your details and that will just help us to connect with you better in the days to come. But thank you. If you're joining us for the very first time, thank you for tuning in and we pray that you have been ministered through the worship and later through the Word of God. Well, let's get ready to give unto the Lord this morning. Here on the screens, you will see our two giving methods. We want to thank you uh, for your faithful and your generous giving. And this just enables us to continue the work of God here through our local church, Glad Tidings Clang. Shall we look to the Lord in prayer even as we uh, give this morning? Lord, we thank you, God, for the ability to give unto your kingdom, O oh God. We thank you that, God, you have given us um, resources which we can steward and diligently use, O oh God, uh, for our families, our lives, and more importantly, to give unto your kingdom so that lord your work oh god will be established here on earth as it is in heaven oh god we pray oh god that lord through our missions faith pledge to our tithes to our uh, love offering oh god we pray oh god that you will use it and that lord many oh god will be blessed and enriched and that many oh god will be saved and and their lives oh god given back to you oh god we pray that as a church help us oh god to steward these resources well and so that lord uh, your body, you got your kingdom, you got will be built, and that Lord, many you got will receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we Lord, we thank you for the ability to give. We thank you for the privilege to give this morning. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Well, thank you, Church, for your faithful and your generous giving. Well, here are just a few announcements for us to keep updated. As announced uh, the, with the prevailing MCOs, the church office is closed. But if you'd like to get in touch with any of the pastors or the church staff, please feel free to give us a call on our mobile phones or you may email the church. We'd like to see how we can uh, minister to you and uh, help you with any needs that you have. Our coming prayer meeting on the 6th of July, Tuesday, 8.30 p.m. We'll be having a special speaker that will join us, uh, Pastor Karen Lau, an ordained minister with the Assemblies of God Malaysia. Uh, and a certified coach will be joining us uh, for our prayer meeting. 
Uh, she has served over 19 over years with Glad Tidings uh, Assembly of God Pataling Jaya. Uh, but she's currently now focusing uh, in the area of coaching and communication in marketplace. So we'd like to encourage you to join us for our Tuesday prayer meetings, the time that we come, pray together, uh, be encouraged by each other's testimonies and also to receive the Word of God. So we want to encourage you to share the link with your family and friends, especially for this coming Tuesday where we have Pastor Karen Lau join us. For all of these announcements, you can get it at gdklang.com slash updates. But just before we head into the Word of God, we have a, a special testimony by one of our church members. In fact, a powerful testimony. And so we want to encourage you to uh, listen in, even as uh, Brother Albert Ramesh will come and uh, give us his testimony on how God has uh, powerfully ministered and transformed his life through uh, this testimony. God bless you, even as you receive this testimony. Hello. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to thank Jesus for healing me, giving me divine healing. And I would like to thank the church for giving me this opportunity to share my testimony. Just to give some background, uh, in church, I am a Sunday school teacher. And as work, I am basically a trainer in a pharmaceutical industry. Basically, what it means is I teach people to communicate with doctors. So in the line of medicine, that is something very important. Now, why is this important? Because around 60 days ago, during one of the training exercises, I suddenly had a line appear in my left eye. And uh, when I went to see a doctor, he referred me to a specialist who said that the eye was bleeding and may need surgery. And I was referred to a specialist who, who can do this kind of surgery in Sunway Medical Center. He confirmed the bleeding and did laser in both eye. And my GP doctor at the same time did took a blood test. And later during the, he reviewed my blood test. And in the blood test, he showed that my kidney function had gone down and my cholesterol, blood sugar, all were not good. And he referred me to a nephrologist and the nephrologist, after seeing my results, a few things he commented. Number one, that my kidney function was, uh, I was graded as CKD level two already. And that uh, for me to improve is a miracle and that it will take at least three or four months even to improve a little bit and to maintain itself should be happy. And for it to improve above and even beyond that, it will need a miracle or even a double miracle. That's the situation. So straight away, my wife, who is a prayer warrior, activated her prayers. And she also started to connect. And we are always connected to the uh, uh, prayer meetings and also our pastors and our G's and we connected with them to pray for us and during one of that uh, praying uh, night we had it was I can remember that night my eyes all were very blurred so blurred that I could not see the food I had I couldn't even see the face of my loved one so I was talking to my wife on, on, on the bed and uh, I had a vision and in that vision I saw a Middle Eastern person uh, and why I could reckon a Middle Eastern because I remember I, I once played Jesus in a play and there was exactly this roughly the same clothes he was wearing and he touched my and I, I I believe he was Jesus and he touched my kidney and he touched my eyes and he said that no I am healed and no pestilence or disease will visit me for 20 years after that event uh, I started seeing my blood pressure go down quickly and even my blood sugar uh, so much so that uh, I had to reduce my blood pressure medication because it was giving me a little bit wooziness to the quarter level and my blood sugar medication also I started reducing a little bit because I knew how to do that and one month later I went and saw my uh, nephrologist and when he did the blood test he was amazed he said that my kidneys had improved significantly 
to almost normal that uh, it's considered not a CKDA and that my cholesterol was normal my blood sugar within one month from a double digit dropped to 6.9 which is almost normal and my blood pressure medication uh, is quartered already and now I was hitting blood pressure of below 120 over 80 uh, he said he's never seen that before he was very very happy and the thing is there was no medication introduced or no medic uh, modification done in that one month God had healed me of this within one month and I know it's a, it's a miracle because I did the blood test I've got the blood test for the month prior to me visiting the uh, nephrologist and also the blood test one month later God is good but God did not just heal me physically like this he healed me spiritually so because during this period I would never felt alone I never felt alone God was always there with me and more importantly that the pastors who prayed for me all of them were very encouraging all of them said all will be well everything will be well and God and pushed and during this period of time the word of God that was invested in me came alive words like uh, God sent a word and you are healed I am the God that healed thee words that uh, through tribulation comes perseverance through perseverance comes character to character comes hope and faith comes through listening and listening to the word of Christ all this came alive in my life and my relationship with God also grew and more importantly because all of these uh, other issues was resolved my kidneys was healed and my eye was healed my left eye went through surgery and now I can see clearly and the healing process is still going on I know God is still with me so to those who are now going through pain and suffering and uh, sickness like I did I can only pass on these three key learnings that I got number one run to the Word of God for that Word of God that you've been deposited unto you will come alive and will strengthen you go to the prayer warriors your pastors your wife your family go to them in love and you pray because God will answer prayers and lastly have unwavering faith and this faith will be unwavered when you have the Word of God so I hope with this testimony and this is true testimony if you I, I cannot explain all the blessings and all the miracles that occurs in this few minutes if you want connect with me and I'll tell you the full story I hope you are blessed by this testimony and I give glory to Jesus for the healing and the continuous healing they're giving and the continuous journey they're giving I thank my church my pastors my family my wife and I give glory and honor to Jesus thank you very much amen well let's get ready to receive the Word of God this morning can I encourage you to get out your Bibles your notepads your note apps even as you take down some notes from today's uh, preaching of God's Word it is indeed our joy and privilege to have uh, Pastor Terence Sinadure, uh, and he is no stranger to us. He's a senior minister with the Assemblies of God Malaysia. Uh, he is uh, the pastor of Agape Community Center Semenye, and he's also the chairman of Rumah Faith uh, Desa Amal Jaire, a home for poor, destitute children. Uh, he's married with three children uh, and blessed with four grandchildren. And so this morning, let's welcome Pastor Terence, uh, even as he delivers the word of God in the live chat. Why not encourage each other with points that you captured? or uh, perspectives that you want to share with each other. And I'm sure that this morning, the Lord will minister to us through the Word of God. Oh God, you're so good. Oh God, you're so good. Praise the Lord. Good morning to each one of you. I'm so glad I can uh, share God's word with you this morning because I would have preferred to come personally to your church to share the word of God originally it was planned that way but because of this MCO I have to record this message and send to you 
I want to thank uh, Pastor Gideon for the opportunity and for the invitation to share God's word and be a blessing to you. When uh, Brother Gideon uh, invited me to talk on this topic of divine healing, I was telling him I'm not a divine healer. And uh, he says, never mind, just tell us what the Bible talks about divine healing. So this morning I will uh, try to talk to you about what the Bible says about divine healing and also give some testimonies and uh, illustrations of uh, real life divine healing in my ministry as well as in the ministry of others. So we will look into God's word this morning, one verse from the Old Testament and another from the New Testament that talks about uh, God's uh, healing <clears throat> upon us, mankind. And um, let us be encouraged and challenged to know that divine healing is not just for the Old Testament or for the New Testament period, but is also today for this dispensation of grace for this uh, generation also. Uh, so the verse we would like to see is Psalms 103, verse 3 and 1 Peter 2, 24. Okay. Um, Brother Noah will read. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. And then 2 Peter 2.24 it says, He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, so that we might die to the sins and live for righteousness by his wounds. You have been healed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So Psalms 103, verse 3 says that, that uh, he forgives all your sins okay, and heals all your diseases. Okay? God is able to do that. All sins and all diseases. And uh, of course, uh, we really uh, do not see uh, how... Uh, some people are still die of sicknesses and, and diseases and many of them are even Christians and why they are not healed we do not know okay God has the prerogative he is, he is sovereign and uh, why some are healed and some are not healed we are unable to answer but we can keep on trusting and praying to God but at the same time, we have seen some very spectacular diseases and uh, sicknesses have been healed. And um, uh, I also sometimes wonder, sometimes the, the non-Christians, when they come to church, they, they get healed. And uh, we Christians sometimes are waiting for healing. <clears throat> and uh, I also understand that uh, we can't live forever in this world. There's a time for each one of us uh, to stop breathing and for us to go to heaven. <clears throat> and so uh, there must be an excuse for us to pass away. And so some of us have sickness and diseases and some of us have heart attacks or uh, through accidents, we pass away. And then in 1 Peter 2.24, it tells us that... Um, that by his stripes we were healed, it says. It's in the past tense. That means healing is already there, but we need to claim the healing. We need to thank God for the for the healing that God is giving. If there's another way of looking at it. That we are already healed. Uh, we are already touched by God. And of course, you know, the sin, the sins in our life have contributed partly to our sickness and diseases and sometimes our lifestyle, our eating habits, our lack of exercise contributes further to our sicknesses. So uh, we need to cooperate with God's word and uh, in this way it will help us. 
Many years ago, I gave up eating pork. <laughs> some people ask, some people disturb me and say I'm a, a Muslim. Uh, but the reason is, my reason for giving up pork is, uh, in the Old Testament, uh, God instructed the Jews not to eat pigs and certain animals. And so, I thought it was for health reasons. And uh, so, for that reason, I, I gave up. Of course, some of my Christian friends will say, what God has, uh, has uh, sanctified through our prayers, we can eat anything we want. So, that's according to your faith. So, you, you live by your faith. And you can eat whatever you want. And uh, we do know that, that sometimes blood is no good. Because blood carries a lot of sicknesses and diseases. And yet there are people who eat blood. They cook blood, uh, blood of animals. Uh, after they have uh, slaughtered them, they take the blood, they collect it and they cook it and eat it in various ways. So by doing that, we will be even uh, uh, taking the, the diseases that come through the blood. So these are some of the dietary habits that we need to take care of. Okay, if you do not want any unnecessary sickness or diseases in our bodies. So, uh, I, will, I will talk about uh, healing. The healing is provided in the Bible with both, in both the Old and New Testaments. Healing is also through Christ's blood. I remember the blood of Jesus Christ is, uh, is, is, is one of the weapons that the devil is afraid of. Whenever we cast out demons, we sing songs that mention the blood of Jesus and we also use the name of Jesus and demons uh, cannot stand it. And uh, very often they will just leave the body once they hear songs about uh, when we use the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus, they just uh, relieve the body of the person whom they possess. So through Christ's name, uh, we, can, we can pray for the sick and needy also. Even Jesus said, in my name, we can pray. Okay, in my name, you shall cast out demons. He says. In my name, you shall heal the sick. I remember... Uh, many years ago, in the early years of my of, of my ministry, uh, I was once invited to uh, Bethel Assembly Malacca to pray for uh, to preach in the Sunday service, and the pastor then was the late Robert Reverend Robert Supaya, and um, so he he put us in a, a guest room in his church, and um, so just before the service started. My wife complained and said that she has got migraine problem. She has, she had this splitting headache and uh, she said she doesn't want to come for the service. And uh, my wife has told that even during our coding days, uh, that for many years she has been suffering from this migraine problem. And um, uh, the pain is sometimes so severe so much that she cannot take it. Sometimes she feel like even banging her head against the wall. So I said, never mind, we will pray. We will pray and trust God uh, that He will heal, or at least let your pain reduce so that uh, so that you can come for service. So there and then, I prayed for my wife. Just the both of us were there, and so I laid hands and prayed for her. And uh, thank God, after some time, the pain went off and uh, she decided to follow me to church. But um, the amazing thing is, it's now 30 or 40 years now, and she has not got this migraine pain anymore. Okay, since that day, she was completely healed and, uh, and she is no more suffering from migraine pains at all. So, uh, through this we know that God can uh, God can uh, heal. God can use us. Okay? Sometimes for our own family members, we find it difficult to pray for them. Uh, we would prefer somebody else to pray. But here again, if we will pray in the name of Jesus and leave the healing to God, God will do it. Okay? 
so uh, that's my encouragement to you and uh, we know that healing is uh, found in the uh, Bible all over but I want to give you some illustrations and events in the New Testament we want to see healing in the New Testament and by the way the title of a message I haven't told you yet the title is do not be ignorant of divine healing okay do not be ignorant of divine healing sometimes we we get we are ignorant and so we don't realize it is for us uh, some people teach in some churches they teach that healing is no more for for this dispensation of grace all healing is is finished with the old testament and new testament uh, no more healing today so in the, when you teach a congregation like that then the congregation won't believe in healing they won't pray for healing okay so there are some who, who teach this kind of teachings uh, like baptism in the holy spirit the evidence of speaking in tongues is no more it's all for the past but we pentecostals we preach about the baptism of the holy spirit and speaking in other tongues we speak about anointing we speak about the unction of the holy spirit we need to we preach that leaders today those of us who are serving god need to be baptized in the holy spirit and with the evidence of speaking in tongues so uh, so some don't because they are ignorant so let us not be ignorant of divine healing also okay so in the old testament we see uh, at least three stories that talks about healing the first one is the widow's son in first kings chapter 17 uh, the widow of, of Zarephath and uh, she uh, Elijah ap 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 appears to her, to her house and and asks her for water and then she later he later asks her for bread and the woman uh, protests and says oh we I do not have enough flour I only have a little bit of flour and a little bit of oil I'm going to make a bread my son and I are going to eat it and then we are going to die so that's the last meal that she's going to have and so she told Elisha she won't be able to give her but Elisha Elijah said make your bread as you have said and give me first so she does it and she gives the bread to Elijah and uh, true enough she finds later that her oil does not run dry neither the flour does not run dry and she's able to continue making bread and and giving to Elijah who stayed in the house and she and her son uh, add to their fill and uh, so uh, that is one principle in this story that we see but what Elijah told the woman and I want you to take note of that I may be digressing a bit but this is a very important principle and that is Elijah told her make your bread and give me first give me first that's what the Lord told him to tell her and true enough she made the bread and gave Elijah first and her flour did not run dry neither the oil so I want you to know brothers and sisters uh, some would say you know that <clears throat> give your tithes first to God they give your tithes first to God don't give all the other expenses and then finally say I got no money for God so put God first and you will have money for the rest of the month for the rest of the year so remember this principle first to God secondly your life give your life first to God surrender yourself first to God not just whenever you have problems not just whenever you have difficulties then you surrender yourself to God every day surrender yourself to God and live for God and let God have first place in your life give your time to God give your energy to God first when Matthew 633 says seek ye first the kingdom of God and all and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you and all these things is not just material things it also includes your health also okay so learn to surrender yourself to God first and uh, the second story we see 
before that, uh, this lady, after she has, after Elijah stayed in the house for a few days, she found that her son died. And she began to tell, cry out to Elijah and say, Your son, my, my son is dead. And uh, can you please help pray for him? And so Elijah takes the boy, goes into his room, puts him on the bed and he lays hands upon the boy and he sleeps on him. And I don't know what he does by sleeping on him, but uh, by, by his body, warm body touching that boy, that boy rises from his death. He's healed. And uh, so there's another story also about another widow's son, the Shunammite widow's son. He also dies. Uh, and this time it is Elisha. Okay, in 2 Kings, we see chapter 4. Uh, Elisha also does the same thing. He takes the boy, he goes into his room, puts him on the bed, uh, lays hands on him, sleep, sleeps on him, and uh, he uses his mouth to touch his mouth. And I believe that's the first time we see about mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. And the boy lives. boy is healed. Praise the Lord. So, that's the second uh, incident that we see in the Old Testament about healing. And then there's another interesting third incident and that is Naaman. Naaman is healed and uh, Naaman is a, is a Syrian. He's not a Jew and uh, he was sent by the Syrian king to go to Israel and to get healing. So when he went to Israel to, Elijah, to Elisha, <coughs> Elisha did not come out of the house. He just told his servant to ask him to go and dip seven times in the river. But this man refused. He said, there are so many better rivers in my, in my country, in Syria. Why should I go into the dirty river to, to get my healing? But his servant said, Master, it's not a difficult thing. Just go dip seven times, as the, as the prophet says. So this man went, uh, this Naaman went to the river and dipped himself seven times. Sometimes we have to obey God literally. When the Spirit of the Lord speaks to us, whether the Holy Spirit asks us to go for altar call or whether the Holy Spirit asks us to go and do something, we have to listen. And uh, I, have, I have heard of testimonies of people uh, listening to, to messages on TV, he, healing evangelists preaching on TV and there are people who will go and lay hands upon the TV because the Holy Spirit told them to go and lay hands on the TV and because they lay hands on the TV even though they are not physically touched by the speaker they get healed according to their faith so this man Naaman had exercised some faith and went to the river and dipped himself seven times and he was healed so praise the Lord how did, how did Elijah come to know about uh, sorry, how did Naaman come to know about Elijah, Elisha? His wife told him to go. <clears throat> Who told the wife? A servant girl. The servant girl was a Jewish girl who was a captive and staying in that house. And this little girl knew about God, knew about Elisha and she told the master's wife there is a prophet in Israel who can heal him. So we see that here's a girl who did not keep quiet. When the need arose, when she saw a need, she began to speak out. So brothers and sisters, here's an important lesson that we can learn. And that is, we have heard the word of God so many times. We know about divine healing. We know about the power of God. We know about Jesus able to do miracles. So whenever there is needs around us, people need to be prayed for. People are sick. People are, are, are suffering through pains and problems. So we who know Jesus, we cannot keep quiet. We should not keep quiet. We must speak out and tell them, God can heal you. Jesus can heal you. Jesus can touch you. And after you have said it, pray for them. Maybe you have prayed and nothing has happened for yourself. But who knows, when you pray for others, they will get healed. So would you do that? And uh, you will see, uh, God using you in the ministry of healing and uh, so there is divine healing mentioned in the Old Testament uh, we will now come to the second point and that is healing in the Gospels there is divine healing 
in the gospel. And the gospel is mostly about the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. Jesus is a healer. He's a master healer. He is the king of healers. Praise the Lord. And all of us, preachers, evangelists, uh, pastors, apostles, prophets, we are all under study of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we, all, we get all our healing powers, our healing abilities, our faith by looking at Jesus Christ. So that is why the Bible tells us we need to look unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. In the Gospels there are at least two, 22 stories of healing that Jesus has done. Some of them are a deaf mute got healed. Uh, a man born blind was healed. In fact, a few blind people, at least three blind people have been healed. A paralytic at Bethsaida was healed. Blind Bartimus was healed. A centurion servant was healed. And this centurion servant, it's a very interesting story. As a centurion came to Jesus, he said, my servant at home is sick. And uh, Jesus says, okay, I will come. But the uh, centurion is, is amazing. He says, you don't need to come. I am also a man of authority. I tell people to go here, they will go. I tell people to come, they will come. And so you are a man of authority. You, all, all you have to say is, is, is to say the word and, and my servant will be healed. And Jesus was amazed at this man's uh, words. So much so he says, Jesus told about his message, I have never seen this kind of faith in all Israel, he says. Few times Jesus told the seekers who have come to see him for healing, he says, I have never seen this kind of faith. Great is thy faith. <coughs> he has said it. And so, what we see here is that God sees faith. The Holy Spirit sees faith. Jesus wants to see faith in us. So when we pray for others, we must exercise faith. When people come to us for healing, they must also exercise faith, not on us, but that Jesus can heal. Hallelujah. So Jesus healed this servant from a distance. He didn't go near and touch him to get him healed. So many times you can see that happening even in our life. We don't need to touch people. We can pray for people at a distance and the Lord is the one that does the healing. And then we have another story about a general's daughter who got healed. And this girl died actually. So while the general was looking to Jesus, talking to Jesus, he said, my, my, my daughter is, is, is very sick, come and uh, pray for her. And while he was talking to Jesus, his, his servant came running and said, Master, don't, don't, don't trouble the, the Lord because your daughter is dead. So finish, no need to pray. But Jesus says, no, I will come. So Jesus went to the house and he laid hands upon the girl and he prayed for her and she rose up from the dead. <laughs> In some of the healings of Jesus Christ, he praises the people for their faith. Okay? And, uh, and this is what Jesus wanted to see in us, as I've said. I believe Jesus has healed more than 22 people. Even John tells us that if, we, if, if everything that Jesus did and thought was recorded, the, all the, 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 the whole world will not be able to contain and uh, for us to write so many books, he says. You can, you can see that in first John, in John 1, 25. In John, sorry, John 21, verse 25 where it is mentioned that that if everything has been recorded can you read that? Jesus did many other things as well if every one of them were written down I suppose that even the whole world will not have room for the books that would have been written okay the whole world will not have room for these things to be written okay so he, it is. So we do not say that you only did 22 miracles. There were more miracles than that. 
Praise the Lord. So not everything is recorded. Jesus' message was not just healing only. For, for us, many times healing is the most important thing. Okay, we, 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 we want to be healed. We don't want to suffer. Okay? Sometimes I believe God doesn't heal our sicknesses because He wants us to identify with the sufferings of Jesus Christ. Okay? Christian life is sometimes a life of sacrifice and suffering also. Bible says, He who, if we suffer with Him, we will rule with Him. So suffering is part of our Christian life and growth. So if, if you're not healed, don't be discouraged, don't forsake Him, and don't go to a medium or, or BOMO to seek for healing. Okay? So look to Jesus. And if He doesn't get healed, say, never mind. The greatest thing is not healing. The greatest thing is, is salvation and going to heaven. That's what Jesus, Jesus also told us in one of the, one of the scriptures. He says, <coughs> it is better for us to go to heaven maimed. In other words, to go to heaven handicapped than to, than to have two legs and go to hell. It's better for us to have one hand or one eye sight and go to heaven than for us to have both the eye sight both our limbs and go to hell. So in other words, he says not all of us will be healed. Okay, then we will have something lacking in us from time to time. Okay, So even though the healing is mentioned, but not all of us are healed. So Jesus' message was not just about healing, but his message primarily is about God's kingdom and about God. And it is... It is that kingdom of God and that God that Jesus came to reveal himself. Thirdly, thirdly we will talk about healing in the New Testament. We saw healing in the Old Testament, healing in the Gospels, healing in the New Testament. There are also healings in the New Testament. New Testament means after Jesus' ascension. Okay? The book of Acts and all the other epistles. In the book of Acts we see some some miracles of healing taking place and other epistles we hear about messages that encourage us to pray for the sick like we saw in first peter 224 <clears throat> okay, that talks about healing in the new testament <coughs> we see a lame man healed by peter and john as they were going to the temple and this lame man was was has been lame since the time of his birth and god used peter and John to pray for him and heal him. And uh, then we see Saul being blinded as he was going to Damascus to persecute more Christians. And uh, on the way the light, bright light shines upon him and his eyes were blinded. And uh, Jesus had to send Ananias to go and pray for him. For him to uh, lay hands upon him so that he can have his eyesight. Here again we see that uh, Ananias was a, like a nobody. Okay? He was a nobody. And, uh, and yet when he goes in obedience and lays hands, Saul sees. Saul comes to be a man greater than Ananias. So God uses nobodies sometimes. You and I are nobody actually in the sight of God. And uh, Maybe in the sight of man also. We are nobody. We are ordinary people. But if we would obey like Ananias and go and lay hands on people and pray for them, <coughs> you will never know <coughs> what miracle God can do through you and I. So that's what Ananias did. So we see miracle. Another miracle there. Then we see a cripple at Lystra being healed in uh, Acts chapter 14. And then we see Dorcas, Dorcas healed of paralysis in Acts chapter 9. So these are some of the healings that took place in the book of Acts and the church age. The book of Acts starts the dispensation of grace. And so we are living in the dispensation of grace and the miracles that happen in the book of Acts can also happen in our life today in our times today. So we will go 
of my fourth point and that is healing today you want to see healing today you want to see god use you in the ministry of healing god simply doesn't use anybody he uses people who are surrendered to him who love him who believe in healing and who are willing to pray for healing and you must know something about divine healing based on the scriptures today we see other people also doing healings we have people mediums and bomos and others also they try to do healing some of them uh, are unable to do some of them may do but today god wants us to look to jesus to do the healing okay so what should we do we should read about healing scriptures from the word of god scriptures that talk about divine healing and this healing scriptures will help us to increase our faith in god for healing and as i said today there are christians who dare not pray for healing at all they think they cannot only only the pastors can so they will bring the sick people to church they will tell them they will witness to them on monday and they will say sunday you come to church ah huh? uh, the pastor will pray for you <coughs> where is your faith you can even pray for the person there and then now i have prayed for people there and then i prayed for people on the road side i people for, i prayed for people on the road i people for pray for people through the handphone i pray for people in the homes so this is what god wants us to do we just pray and leave the healing to god i remember I remember in church last time when i was pastoring in kaja assembly and uh, there was this lady who would come for a prayer meeting she only come for prayer meetings she, she, on sunday she goes to another church uh, uh, church which she had been going from small and uh, i don't know whether the church it is a traditional church and i don't know whether they pray for healing or not but she she comes to our church for prayer meeting and uh, i never find out why she comes to our, why she comes for prayer meeting but uh, uh, we welcome her she comes so one day when the prayer was, when we were praying we also asked the congregation to pray for one another so a girl was a young christian was sitting next to her she prayed for her we tell them tell your needs to one another and pray for them so this lady has told her i want to i'm married for many years and i don't have a baby i want a baby and uh, a few years she has been married and she's been trying to have a child but she cannot and so this young christian prayed for her must be a simple prayer for god to touch her womb make her conceive and a uh, few months later she came for the prayer meeting and she said and she testified that i'm now conceived and she said the other day i remember asking the sister to pray for my knee and she laid the hand on me and prayed for me and i felt that, that day god touched me and later i became i became pregnant and today i have a son and um, later she testified to say that she has a son and um, so praise the lord what i'm why i'm saying telling you the story is because this lady who prayed for her this girl is a young christian but she exercised faith she prayed by faith so i want to tell you even god can use you some of you here are leaders sunday school teachers board members uh, mature christians how nice if all of us are willing to lay hands and pray for people counsel people people with various needs and problems and all these people who we pray for have the opportunity to come to jesus christ and many opportunities we have to bring people to christ i believe when when god talks about healing when jesus heals people and when we pray for people to get healed the the number one priority number one 
uh, purpose should be that soul must come to know Jesus. It's not just healing. That soul must come to know Jesus. If it's not a Christian, that person must come to know Christ and be a child of God. That should be the number one purpose of us to pray for others. So take time to read the healing verses in the New Testament. By sowing God's words in our hearts, we strengthen our faith. The gospel teaches about healing. Jesus shows God's will about healing. That healing is important to God. And uh, that God will heal in His will. So let's trust God for healing all the time. And now there are three things that I want to, you to know about healing. Three important things. Firstly, healing takes place when we pray for others. Healing takes place when we pray for others. I remember one of the uh, leaders of my church that I'm pastoring now, one day he came and told me, Pastor, I got a friend. Uh, he's a Catholic. He doesn't go to church. Uh, but he's willing to believe in Jesus Christ. And uh, he cannot come to church because he cannot walk. I want to bring him, but he cannot walk. Uh, his knees are paining. His legs are painful. So he has difficulty walking. So I said, let's go and see him in his house then. So... Our church is in Simini and uh, he's in he's in Kaja. So nevertheless, we went to his house and uh, I talked I talked to him about Jesus Christ and witnessed to him. He accepted the Lord, said the sinner's prayer, and after that, I both of us prayed for him. I went on my knees and uh, actually I cannot kneel down too long because I've got knee problem. But I, I knelt and held his legs, his knees, both his knees and prayed for him by faith. And uh, next Sunday he was in church. And, he, and I asked him, how's your knees? He says, Pastor, all my pain has gone. Thank you for your prayers. I'm healed. So from that time onward, he started coming to church faithfully. <clears throat> okay. And so here is a situation where we must be obedient and must be willing to go. Where there is a need, we must be willing to go. Distance should not be a problem. Okay. So healing takes place when we pray for others. And uh, secondly, healing takes place when we see evangelists praying for other people. You know, in my, from my early years as a Christian, I, I became a Christian at 15 years old. At that time, when I was 14, 15 years old, I have seen so many films being shown in my church by healing evangelists like T.L. Osborne, Oral Roberts, Catherine Kuhlman. And uh, we used to see these films and we, we used them as evangelistic tools. And many young people and old people who came to church uh, are prayed for and they get healed, they believe in Jesus Christ. That's how our churches grew those days, by seeing these healing uh, miracles. Then today we have people like Benny and Maurice Saluro, David Cho Yonggi, and the late Reverend uh, Renard Bonke. These are all healing evangelists. Recently, another healing prophet passed away in, in Africa, uh, Prophet T.B. Joshua. Um, some say he's a controversial man, but I don't find anything wrong with him. I, I see some of his Emmanuel TV and I see some of the miracles that God uh, does through his life is amazing. Okay, So this man has healed many people, not only from, from his city of Lagos in Nigeria, but people from Europe and America, they all come, South Africa, they all come to his church and they get healed of their sicknesses. Hallelujah. Today I'm wondering who will God raise again from that church to replace this man, T.B. Joshua. Evangelistic meetings in our churches. And I've seen evangelistic meetings in my own church. People get healed. There was a story about a man uh, who, is, who is now about 60 years old. And uh, he, he testified after coming for a healing service. He said, I could not bend myself. He cannot bend. He cannot bend to touch his legs even. Feet. And uh, for 40 years, I could not do it. 
But that day, that healing evangelist in my church prayed for me and I can now straighten my back, I can bend down, I can do many things, he says. He says, thank God for healing. Okay. And then there's another boy who was deaf, uh, was 22 years old, but he was deaf from a small boy after an accident, he lost his hearing, uh, his hearing. And he cannot talk because he cannot hear. And uh, he and the mother will always, every time she comes to a prayer meeting, she will say, pray for my son, pray for my son. So that day when the evening evangelist came, I made sure that uh, she brings her son. And in that service, her son was touched. And he himself said, I can hear in both my ears now, he said. But he still hasn't started talking properly because he's learning how to talk now. He has not been able to talk for many years. So healing takes place when evangelists come to our church. So next time when an evangelist comes to your church, do not be like many who don't bring the sick, who don't bring the unsaved. Many times we come ourselves and get, try to get saved again. We get saved again and again and again at every evangelistic meetings. But there are some who have never heard the gospel even once. So bring them to the house of God. Healing takes place when we worship God. This is a very, very important truth. If you're not healed, try worshipping God. Don't come to church and just wait for the altar call so that the pastor can lay hands or the preacher, the evangelist can lay hands and pray for you. You can get your healing when you're worshipping God. Okay? So the time comes for worship, give your best and worship God with all your heart. Just like Paul and Silas did in prison. They worship God while in the prison, while they were in chains. They praise God and worship God. And there was a miracle that took place in the prison. And people were, and, 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 and the jailer got saved because of the miracle of seeing uh, Paul and Silas chains falling off and the, uh, and, and the gates opening, earthquake in the prison. Never has that happened. It is because of their praise and worship. I remember also again another testimony in my, happened in my church. Uh, while I was in Kajang, there was this gentleman who was moving into a new house and he was doing some, rene he was doing, he wanted to do some renovations and he got the contractor and he was trying to explain to him and as we were walking back, he fell on top of a, a, a large sheet of glass. This, this guy is quite a heavy guy. He fell on it and the glass broke and the glass cut his hand and he had 40 stitches. And uh, during those times, his hand would be like this. And uh, uh, oh, the hand was straight. One day he was in church. The next Sunday he came to church. And uh, with his hand this way. Early in the morning, that Sunday morning, he was uh, on his balcony. He was telling, telling to himself, I cannot straighten my hand. And uh, he says, I must go and see a physiotherapy on Monday, he was telling. And as he came to church on Sunday, as the people were worshipping, he raised his hand to worship God. Even though the hand was painful, he, he worshipped God. And as he was worshipping God, he felt someone straightening his hands. And it was painful. He was telling the person, God, if you are if you're straightening my hands, do it slowly, Lord. It's paining, he said. And uh, very soon his hand got straightened. And God did a miracle for him while he was worshipping God. Okay, so, brothers and sisters, healing takes place when we worship. So, whenever there is opportunity to worship in the church, tell yourself, I'm going to worship God well. I don't care who is beside me. Whether they raise their hands or not, I'm going to raise my hands. Whether they close their eyes or not, I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to sing unto the Lord. I'm going to say, I'm going to sing in tongues. I'm going to praise the Lord. And if you do that, some miracle will take place in your life. God will touch you. I always say, when you touch God in your worship, God will touch your life. So this is what I want to leave with you. Divine healing 
is in the word of God. Divine healing is used as a tool for us to draw close to God and for the unsafe to be saved. So praise the Lord. I also have been touched by the Lord through divine healing. And uh, so I don't have time to talk about more about my healings, but I believe I've said enough and I believe God will touch you and use you. Always remember, don't just wait for your healing. You seek for other people's healing and who knows, you will get yours. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you, Lord God, for today's opportunity to teach your people on divine healing. Lord, we know that healing is the word of God. We know that healing is for today. We know, Lord, that you can use us to touch other people's lives and bring about their healing and salvation. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you will touch this congregation, Lord. If there's anybody in this congregation today or anybody in your homes today, wherever you're sitting, you want God to touch you. You can raise your hands and place your other hand in whichever area that you need to be healed. And as I pray, trust God for healing. I exercise my faith to pray for you. You exercise, exercise your faith in Jesus by believing. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray, O oh God, for everyone in the houses where they are, as they are hearing your word, and as they have heard your word, and I pray, O oh Lord, that faith has come. And I pray, Lord, as they raise their hands this moment and believe you for healing in their life, for salvation, O oh Lord, for deliverance from any of their bad habits. I pray, O oh God, for a miracle to take place even where they are now. In Jesus' name, we release healing. In Jesus' name, we release your touch of, of healing, O oh God. Heal them, O oh Lord, of their sicknesses and diseases. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. By the blood of Jesus, they are healed. Hallelujah. By the, in the name of Jesus, they are healed, O oh God. Thank you, Father, for your healing. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, thank you, Pastor Terence, for the word of God this morning. Come on, in the live chat, why not begin to thank Pastor Terence? He could be joining us in our live chat. And uh, Pastor Terence, thank you. Thank you for the word of God this morning. Well, church, even as we head out to the week, you know, let's continue to trust the Lord. That the Lord is with us and the Lord will provide for each of our needs and to protect us and our families. Uh, even as we remain at home, we go out for our errands, um, we go out for our work, uh, let's continue to uh, pray and ask God for His protection and His covering upon our lives. Let's pray even as I give us the benediction for this morning. Lord, we thank you for that, Lord, we are found in your presence. We thank you that, God, we have the resources available, oh God, to have this Sunday's morning service, oh God. We thank you for all those that are behind the scenes that have put in the effort, their time to make this service happen, oh God. We thank you for all the other amenities, the other tools that we have, the internet connection um, that has made it possible for us to have this online service, oh God. And so, Lord, we pray that even as we head out towards the new week that's ahead, oh God, we pray that, Lord, you grant us hope and a faith-filled uh, posture, oh God, to recognize that, Lord, you are with us, oh God, and that, Lord, we can continue to depend and to put our hope and trust in you, oh God. And so, Lord, may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face to you and give you peace. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and by his grace give us eternal encouragement and good hope encourage you, your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. So may the Lord bless you church and have a wonderful week ahead. In Jesus' name, Amen. If you need all the information that you hear today, do log on to www.gtclang.com slash updates. Your one stop for all your church needs. Also, if you are on Instagram or Facebook, do follow us at our handle at gtclang. That's all the time we have today. God bless.